So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, the biology of memory and about memory distortions. So to begin with the biology um, and understanding especially the brain and brain uh, structures, um, you know, we know that brain simmers with activity. Different groups of neurons are responsible for different uh, processes in brain like uh, thoughts and perceptions um, which drift in and out of action. So memory is, is the reactivation of specific group of neurons uh, formed from persistent change that occurs um, because of the strength of connections between neurons. So that's actually something we call as synaptic pl plasticity. The, these connections can be made stronger or weaker depending on when and how often they have been activated in the past. So active connections tend to get stronger whereas those that aren't used get weaker and can eventually disappear entirely. So this is what when we spoke about DK um, as one of the reasons why we forget uh, you know, we actually touched on the entire uh, process that we are talking about here. So, uh, you know, stress is also another factor. Uh, yeah, well, there are hormones that are responsible, say, when we experience stress. And it says, that, uh, yeah, cortisol and epinephrine increases in uh, encoding storage, but prolonged and excessive stress interferes with memory. So understanding that is also an important process in uh, the study of memory. When you think about um, events that happen in our lives, you know, especially um, a shooting or a bombing, um, those are events that actually form clear vivid um, pictures. I mean, they stay with us in our mind. Um, and those, those are emotional events that actually helps like have those emotional arousals and causes some hormonal changes that was called flash black, uh, flash bulb memories um, so those are events like you know uh, when you think about the 9-11 shooting even looking at the picture would cause some of us have some emotions towards it um, different type different things we can think about but uh, understanding that such in we uh, our memory is so tied to the emotions we experience is very important uh, in understanding our brain in fact has different um, areas that actually is responsible for explicit and implicit uh, memory storage um, mechanisms uh, hippocampus is yes the, a very important uh, part but yes amygdala are relating emotions to your memory and cerebrum which more so is important for us to understand uh, the skills habits and things that we uh, actually have from motor or non-declarative memory or implicit memory is more so with the cerebrum and basic ganglia. So there are different areas of our brain that actually uh, is associated with different memory functions. But there is something that we have to um, we have heard about, which is called TBI, right? To a traumatic brain injury. I think it's important to touch on that, is because um, that leads to a lot of uh, brain. Da damage therefore affecting different memory or cognitive processes. Amnesia could be one of the results of uh, brain uh, trauma, right? Um, yeah, amnesia, or in some time people think of it as dementia, but they, those are slightly different. Um, amnesia in this case, say when, you, when uh, an accident uh, happens, and after that, a person actually um, loses all the uh, old memories and just can remember only the new memories. We call it retrograde uh, amnesia. But when the old memories are intact, and if you have uh, had met someone who has had a traumatic incident, but then can't form new memories, it's called antrograde um, amnesia. So understanding that difference, I think, is also important from the previous example I gave you over time, if we cannot, we can just form new memories and not the old memory and the otherwise. Um, is also an important process in understanding memory loss. So Alzheimer's, I've uh, spoken about this a lot, about Alzheimer's, how it's de uh, neurologically degenerative um, condition that actually impacts and decreases the conscious part of our memory, which is explicit, uh, and how it also, but there are cases where the implicit is more, uh, is retained, you are able, because you don't really use the hippocampus area in the implicit part of your memory. It's more procedural nature. 
Um, so think of this example and uh, looking at the words for uh, some time and if I ask you to kind of uh, remember and write it down now um, and now that I've taken it off I'll give you a minute to just pause and then write it see if you're able to um, come up with different things like uh, sour cake sleep doctor well not really sleep and doctor but probably you have sour and cake right so there are different reasons why we do remember but we do also remember certain things like uh, sweet I know a lot of you would have had a word sweet in there uh, although when you look at the words it doesn't have well this is because of what we are going to talk about in the next topic which is called memory distortion because of what we say about false memory or inaccurate part of it uh, we actually develop this inconsistency with the reality um, and we talk about uh, this in con conjunction with the eyewitness testimony of how we create false memory with questions that could be leading and just with few features of a person we we may tend to say oh yeah I remember this person but probably that's not true it's not because the person wants to lie but the brain actually tends to think that that is true and more often they're confident even though it's really a wrong answer it's actually to do with the brain so it's suggestibility when people are given misleading um, information you know that is one of the reasons why we, uh, we our brain could be tricked to believe it and then it would give you the answer based on uh, the way uh, uh, something is presented so um, that's why in criminal justice we do they do have uh, psychologists in us um, to help out understand the process of how memory can be fatal and how that can cause impact in um, people's life right so false memory repressed memory there is slight difference intentionally forcefully if you are um, not wanting to bring it to the consciousness uh, that would be repression but false memory is not really intentional it's just that uh, you create a memory that did not happen more often you don't really know that it is something you're making it up so uh, there is a debate idea of a trauma and I want you to look at it and then think about what you what you think it is so uh, look at the pictures and also this is just a study that was done um, you you tend to really believe what you want to believe right um, as you can see in this example it's very true with most of us too so this is just an overview of how uh, what all we discussed in this chapter um, if any part of this is you are interested in there is a video on forgetting um, and there's basic video on just understanding memory mechanisms um, do have a look at those and just know that we have covered all this in forgetting